सी आई टी एन सी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनि शाला सो लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनि शाला क्लास सेवन हेलो चिल्ड्रन हाउ आर यू आई एम अमित कुमार ठाकुर योर फ्रेंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर हैप्पी एंड हेल्दी अलोंग विद योर फैमिली दिस इज अमेजिंग टाइम फॉर किड्स लाइक यू वाई because you have got a lot of unexpected holidays keep dancing singing playing and enjoying a lot at your home but also do some studies to keep yourself mentally fit we have decided to help you in your studies at home we will have a very good discussion on the first chapter of your class 7 history book tracing changes through a thousand years Let me make you clear that in your class 7 history book you will read about 1000 years from roughly 700 to 1750 CE. So dear children, let's start our talk on your first chapter. Dear children, do you know who was Al-Idrisi? Well, he was an Arab geographer. He drew a world map in 1154 CE what was the unique thing about his map in this map south india is where we would expect to find north india and sri lanka is the island at the top it means upside down interesting isn't it it is given at the very first page of your textbook do have a look at it The second map of your book was prepared by a French cartographer in 1720s. This map seems more familiar to us and the coastal areas in particular are surprisingly detailed. Here we can notice that the science of cartography different in the two periods. What has come out of this discussion on these two maps? Here we can conclude that when historians read documents, maps and texts from the past, they have to be sensitive to the different historical backgrounds, the context in which information about the past was produced. Dear children, now we come on the next topic of your chapter and it is new and old terminologies dear children not only the context in which information is produced changes with time language and meanings also change medieval persian for example is different from modern persian the difference is not just with regard to grammar and vocabulary the meanings of word also change over time Let's take the term Hindustan for example. Today we understand it as India, the modern nation state. But in the 13th century when Minhaj ur Siraj used this term, he meant the areas of Punjab, Haryana and the lands between the Ganga and Yamuna. Minhaj ur Siraj was a chronicler who wrote in Persian. He used the term Hindustan in a political sense for lands that were a part of the dominions of the Delhi sultans. The areas included in this term shifted with the extent of the sultanate, but the term never included South India. But dear children, do you know how did Mughal emperor Babur use the term Hindustan? Babur used Hindustan to describe the geography, the fauna and the culture of the inhabitants of the subcontinent. Amir Khusro, a 14th century poet, also used the term Hindustan in the similar way. While the idea of a geographical and cultural entity like India did exist, 
द टर्म हिंदुस्तान डिड नॉट कैरी द पॉलिटिकल एंड नेशनल मीनिंग्स विच वी एसोसिएट विद इट टूडे सो डियर चिल्ड्रन वी शुड कंक्लूड दैट हिस्टोरियंस हैव टू बी केयरफुल अबाउट द टर्म्स दे यूज बिकॉज दे मैंट डिफरेंट थिंग्स इन द पास्ट लेट्स टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ सिंपल टर्म लाइक फॉरनर इट इज यूज टूडे to mean someone who is not an indian in the medieval period a foreigner was any stranger who appeared say in a given village someone who was not a part of that society or culture a city dweller therefore might have regarded a forest dweller as a foreigner but two peasants living in the same village were not foreigners to each other even though they may have had different religious or caste backgrounds so dear children now we are on another topic of your chapter and it is historians and their sources dear children in the period from 700 to 1750 we will notice some continuity in the sources used by historians for the study of this period they still rely on coins inscriptions architecture and textual records for information but there is also considerable discontinuity the number and variety of textual records increased dramatically during this period they slowly displaced other types of available information manuscripts and documents provide a lot of detailed information to historians but they are also difficult to use you must be wondering why it was so why it was difficult to use them i will tell you through this period paper gradually became cheaper and more widely available people used it to write holy text chronicles of rulers letters and teaching of saints petitions and judicial records and for registers of accounts and texts manuscripts were collected by wealthy people rulers monasteries and temples they were placed in libraries and archives There are also some limitations of using manuscripts as a source of history. There was no printing press in those days, so scribes copied manuscripts by hand. As scribes copied manuscript, they also introduced small changes. A word here, a sentence there. These small differences grew over centuries. of copying until manuscripts of the same text became substantially different from one another this is a serious problem because we rarely find the original manuscript of the author today we are totally dependent upon the copies made by the later scribes as a result historians have to read different manuscripts versions of the same text to guess what the author had originally written sometimes author revised their chronicles at different times the 14th century chronicler jauddin barni wrote his chronicle first in 1356 and another version 2 years later the two differ from each other but historians did not know about the existence of the first version until the 1960s it remained lost in large library collections so dear children you must remember that there are shortcomings of any source which we will use to know the past now children we are on another topic of your chapter and it is new social and political groups Dear children during the 1000 years between 700 and 1750 
the scale and variety of developments that occurred was very large this was a period of economic political social and cultural changes in this period new technologies made their appearance like the persian wheel in irrigation the spinning wheel in weaving and firearms in combat new foods and beverages arrived in the subcontinent like potatoes corn chilies tea and coffee all these innovations came along with people who brought other items with them as well the period from 700 to 1750 was also a period of great mobility groups of people traveled long distances in search of opportunity the subcontinent held immense wealth and the possibilities for people to carve a fortune one group of people who became important in this period were the rajputs a name derived from rajputra meaning the son of a ruler between the 8th and 14th centuries the term was applied more generally to a group of warriors who claimed kshatriya caste status thus in this term not just rulers and chieftains were included but also soldiers and commanders who served in the armies of different monarchs all over the subcontinent a chivalric code of conduct extreme valor and a great sense of loyalty were the qualities attributed to rajputs by their poets and bards other groups of people such as the marathas sikhs jats ahoms and kaisthas also used the opportunities of the age to become politically important in the period from 750 to 1750 there was a gradual cleaning of forests and extension of agriculture a change faster and more complete in some areas than in others changes in their habitat forced many forest dwellers to migrate others started tilling the land and became peasants as a result significant economic and social differences emerged amongst peasants some possessed more productive land others also kept cattle and some combined artisanal work with agricultural activity during the lean season as society became more differentiated people were grouped into jatis or sub castes and ranked on the basis of their backgrounds and their occupations ranks were not fixed permanently and varied according to the power influence and resources controlled by members of the jati the status of the same jati could vary from area to area dear children jatis framed their own rules and regulations to manage the conduct of their members these regulations were enforced by the jati panchayats but don't think that jati panchayats were supreme jatis were also required to follow the rules of their villages several villages were governed by a chieftain together they were only one unit of a state so dear children now you have understood that how the society changed during this 1000 years now we come on another topic of your chapter and it is region and empire dear children during the period from 700 to 1750 ce large states like those of the cholas tughlaqs or mughals emerged which encompassed many regions 
संस्कृत प्रशस्ति प्रेजिंग द डेली सुल्तान गयासुद्दीन बलबन हु रूल्ड फ्रॉम 1266 टू 1287 एक्सप्लेन्ड दैट ही वाज द रूलर ऑफ अ वास्ट एम्पायर दैट स्ट्रेस्ड फ्रॉम बंगाल इन द ईस्ट टू गजनी इन अफगानिस्तान इन द वेस्ट एंड इंक्लूडेड ऑल ऑफ द साउथ इंडिया historians regard these as exaggerated claims of conquests dear children by 700 many regions already possessed distinct geographical dimensions and their own language and cultural characteristics they were also associated with specific ruling dynasties there was considerable conflict between these states occasionally dynasties like the cholas khaljis tughlaqs and moguls were able to build an empire that was pan regional meaning spanning diverse regions when the mughal empire declined in the 18th century it led to the reemergence of regional states but years of imperial pan regional rule had altered the character of the regions this was apparent in the emergence of many distinct and shared traditions in the field of governance the management of the economy elite cultures and language so dear children you must remember that through the 1000 years between 700 to 1750 the character of the different regions did not grow in isolation these regions felt the impact of larger pan regional forces of integration without ever quite losing their distinctiveness now children we are on another topic of your chapter and it is old and new religions dear children we come on the religious aspect of these 1000 years from 700 to 1750 ce this period witnessed major developments in religious traditions religion is clearly connected with the social and economic organization of local communities as the social worlds of these groups altered so too did their beliefs it was during this period that important changes occurred in what we call hinduism today these included the worship of new deities the construction of temples by royalty and the growing importance of brahmanas the priest as dominant group in society why do you think brahmanas became a dominant group in the society it was because of two reasons number 1 their knowledge of sanskrit texts earned the brahmanas a lot of respect in society number 2 their dominant position was consolidated by the support of their patrons new rulers searching for prestige another major development of this period was the emergence of the idea of bhakti of a loving personal deity that devotees could reach without the aid of priests or elaborate rituals in this period new religions appeared in the subcontinent merchants and migrants first brought the teachings of the holy quran to india in the 7th century muhammad bin qasim attacked sindh and established first islamic state in the subcontinent many rulers were patrons of islam and the ulema ulemas were learned theologians and jurists of islam like hinduism islam was interpreted in a variety of ways by its followers there were shia and sunni muslims 
there were other important differences between the various schools of law like Hanafi and Shafi and in theology and mystic traditions. Now dear children we come on another topic and it is thinking about time and historical periods. Dear children, historians study time but they don't see time just as a passing of hours, days or years as a clock or a calendar. They see time as reflecting changes in social and economic organization, in the persistence and transformation of ideas and beliefs. For making the study of time much easier, historians divide the past into large segments, which are called periods, that possess shared characteristics. In the middle of the 19th century, British historians divided the history of India into three periods, Hindu, Muslim and British. This division was based on the idea that the religions of rulers was the only important historical change and that there were no other significant developments in the economy, society or culture. Such a division also ignored the rich diversity of the subcontinent. This periodization is not in use today. At present, most historians look to economic and social factors to characterize the major element of different moments of the past. Generally, the period between 700 to 1750 CE is termed as medieval history but it again has some problems. These thousand years of Indian history witnessed considerable changes. After all, the 16th and 18th centuries were quite different from the 8th or the 11th. Therefore, describing the entire period as one historical unit is not without its problems. Moreover, the medieval period is often contrasted with the modern period. Modernity carries with it a sense of material progress and intellectual advancement. This seems to suggest that medieval period was lacking in any change whatsoever. But of course, we know this was not the case. Now, dear children, we come on your favorite quiz time the favorite segment of our program so be ready now we start the quiz the first question is we don't find inscriptions for the period after 700 true or false dear children tell me this statement is true or false yes many of you have given the correct answer this statement is false now we move on to another question. The Marathas asserted their political importance during this period. True or false? Yes, dear children. Yes, hurry up. Yes, many of you have given the correct answer. This statement is true. Now, the third question for you. Forest dwellers were sometimes out of their lands with the spread of agricultural settlements. This statement is true or false? Yes, many of you have given the correct answer. This statement is true. Another question. Sultan Gayasuddin Balban controlled Assam, Manipur and Kashmir. True or false? What's your answer, children? Yes, you have given the correct answer. This statement is false. Now we come on another question. What are archives? Yes, can you tell me what are archives? We have discussed it. Archives are places where manuscripts are kept. Another question. Who was a 14th century chronicler? Give the name of a famous one. Can you give me the name? 
Yes, majority of you have given the correct name. He is Ziauddin Barni. Another question, dear friends. Which new crops were introduced into subcontinent during the period from 700 to 1750? Yes, can you guess? We have discussed it. Okay, many of you have given the correct answer. These are potatoes, corn, chilies, tea and coffee. Another question. Give some examples of the technological changes associated with the period from 700 to 1750. What were the technological changes, dear friend? Number one, Persian wheel in irrigation. Number two, spinning wheel in weaving. And number three, firearms in combat. Another question, dear friends. What were some of the major religious developments during this period? Can you answer this question? Yes, we have discussed it. Okay, I am summarizing the major important developments. Number one, worship of new deities. Number two, construction of temples by royalty. Number three, growing importance of Brahmanas. Number four, the emergence of the idea of Bhakti. And number five, the appearance of some new religions like Islam in the subcontinent. Now we move on to another question. What do you mean by pan-regional empire? Yes, we have discussed this pan-regional empire. I am giving you the answer. A pan-regional empire is referred to an empire which is expanded over several regions of diverse cultures, geography and religion. For example, the dynasties of the Mughal, Cholas, Khaljis and the Tughlaqs. Another question, my dear friends. Gayasuddin Balban was a, and your options are, historian, A, chronicler, B, poet, C, and Delhi Sultan, D. What is the correct option? Yes, many of you have given the correct answer. It is option D. Gyasuddin Balban was a Delhi Sultan. Another question, dear friends. Al Idrisi was a, and your options are A. Historian, B. Poet, C. Ruler, and D. Geographer. What is the correct answer? Yes, many of you have given the correct answer. Al Idrisi was a geographer. Another question, dear friends, who used to copy the manuscripts in the early medieval period? And your options are the scribes, B, the clerks, C, the priests, and D, the ministers. And what is the answer? Yes, it is option A, the scribes. Another question, dear friends, name the warrior clan that become popular between 8th and 14th century and your options are Kayasthas A, Brahmanas B, Rajputas C and Baniya D. What is the correct answer? Yes, many of you have given the correct answer. It is C, Rajputs. Another question, dear friends. Which sect of Muslims considered Ali as the legitimate leader of the Muslim community and your answers are A. Shia B. Sunni C. Khoja and D. Bohra What is the correct answer dear friends? Yes, it is A. Shia So dear students in the last I want to say that during these thousand years the societies of the subcontinent were transformed often and economies in several regions reached a level of prosperity that attracted the interest of European trading companies. With this, we conclude our discussion on the first chapter of your class 7 history book. I hope you have enjoyed the discussion and learned a lot. 
I, Amit Kumar Thakur, your friend, will meet you in the next episode. Till then, bye-bye. You are just listening to curriculum-based programs, Dhwani Shala. Production Assistants, Minakshi Kukreti and Jagbandhu Jana. Recorded by Bati Lang Lingdo and produced by Ajit Horo. This program was brought to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi India.